January 2018 M1 IAL. <clears throat> um, a package of mass 6 kilograms is held at rest at a fixed point A on a rough horizontal plane. Okay, sorry, on a rough plane, not horizontal. On a rough plane. Rough means there's going to be friction involved. The plane is inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal. The package is released from rest and slides down a line of greater slope of a plane. The coefficient of friction between the package and the plane is one quarter. The package is modeled as a particle. Find the magnitude of acceleration of the package. Okay, so let's first of all make a little diagram to show what's happening here. You have an inclined plane. Okay, so let's draw a few lines here to show that. So it's inclined to the horizontal. So here's your horizontal and here's the plane. Okay, so you have a few things happening here. You have inclined at 30 degrees. Okay, so you got your particle. Make this a bit longer so we can show some things happening. Now, let's look at the forces acting on this particle. First of all, it has weight, 6 kilograms. So you've got 6 kilograms acting down. So that's going to be 6 G newtons. Let's say 6 G, I'll call it 6 kilograms. 6 times G, that will be the weight. Okay, that's the force acting down. Okay, G we take as 9.8 in, in at Excel, um, uh, M1. Okay, but I'll just write 6 G for now. All right, um, this is the point A. Okay, the plane is inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal. Okay, that's that sorted out. That means we can basically do the following as well. We can show um, basically we have to deal with what's perpendicular to the plane and what's parallel to the plane. Okay, so we need to basically resolve this force in these two directions. Find the component in the direction per perpendicular and parallel to the plane. So basically what we have is these two triangles here are, are similar triangles. That's 90 degrees, that's 90 degrees, okay. And this angle is going to be 30 degrees. This angle there is going to be 30 degrees. Okay. So we can say that for this particular force, you're going to have 6G and you're going to go into the angle. So this this component, the con co component perpendicular is 6G times the cosine of 30 degrees. And for this component, it's going to be 6G times the sine of 30 degrees because... To, to resolve the, the weight in this direction, you're going to go away from the angle. Away from the angle. You could, if you want, write cosine 60, because that angle's, that's 90 degrees, that's 60 degrees going into the angle. Sine 30 is the same as cosine 60. But it's easy if you just think, you go into the angle, cosine, you go away from the angle, sine. Okay? We also have the reaction force acting. Whenever something's in contact okay, with a surface, there will be a reaction force. Okay, so you've got the reaction force acting perpendicular, okay, to the surface. So that's R. Get rid of this line here. Okay, and because it's a rough plane, we're going to be dealing with friction. We're going to be dealing with friction, okay, as it's a rough plane. Okay, so we'll have a force acting in this direction as well. Okay, so let me make this a bit bigger so it's the same. Okay, so there's your R, and here you've got friction. Okay, friction, now, okay, so we've got all the forces acting. All right, now we know that um, it's released from rest and it slides down the, the, the plane. So that means the friction has reached its limiting value. Okay, because if it hadn't reached its limiting value, the friction would have prevented it from sliding down the plane. So the friction has increased until it's reached its limiting value. 
all right, because this thing is, is now moving on this rough plane. So we know the friction must equal, friction, uh, the F max must be F max, which is given by mu times R, okay? So I think that's all of the information we know we need. We know that mu is equal to a quarter, all right? So we know that friction is equal to a quarter R. But anyway, so those are all the forces acting on this particle, and they're asking us to find the acceleration, the magnitude of the acceleration. Okay, for part A. Okay, so let's go ahead and deal with that. Now, as I said in these type of questions, everything is basically about resolving forces. When you resolve forces, you can basically solve any part of this question you want. Okay, so let's resolve forces. But when you have an inclined plane, you have to resolve parallel and perpendicular to the plane. So let's deal with parallel to the plane. Now, um, the other convention is which is always a good thing to take bear in mind, is that try to take as positive in these type of questions, okay, the direction in which something is moving, okay, or the direction in which it has a tendency to move, okay, the direction it would want to move if it could move, okay, for example, if it's a statics question and you're dealing with friction, the, the direction the particle wants to move in okay would be the positive direction here it's definitely moving down the plane so i'm going to take this direction as positive so i'm resolving with this direction as positive this direction is slanted means parallel to the plane okay this is parallel to the plane so if i look at this i know that f equals ma it's not static now it's dynamics it's moving okay this particle is moving so I can't say that the forces acting down the plane are equal to the forces acting up the plane. No. This, this time we have a resultant force which is causing it to accelerate down the plane. Okay? So what I can say is that if I take the, the forces acting down the plane and subtract from them the forces acting up the plane, I'll know that that's equal to MA. The resultant force is equal to mass times acceleration. So I'll say 6G times sine... 30. Now, acting down the plane, that's that's the only force acting down the plane. It's the, it's the component of the weight down the plane. All right? Uh, the reaction force is acting perpendicular to that direction, so it doesn't have any component in that direction. All right, so take away the frictional force, which is mu times R, which I'll find later. That's mu times R. And I know that's equal to MA. Now, the mass of the particle was 6 kilograms, right? So that's equal to 6 times A, which we have to find. All right, so let's now resolve perpendicular to the plane. If we resolve perpendicular to the plane, we can see we have up the plane. Now, in, in, the, in this particular um, direction, it's not <coughs> moving, is it? It's going to stay the same um, distance from this inclined plane all the way as it goes down. So we can say that it's not accelerating in this particular uh, direction, right? So we can say that R is equal to 6G times cosine 30. And the friction has no um, component in this particular direction, right? So R is equal to 6G times cosine 30. All right, so that's our equation by resolving perpendicular to the plane. So let's now see what we can get from this. Okay, we know that mu is equal to one quarter. So we can work out a few bits of information here. All right, so first of all, I have here um, 6g sine 30, which is 6g times a half. 6g, oops, 6g times a half. 6g times a half minus mu r minus a quarter times 6g times now cosine 30 is root 3 over 2 okay and that's equal to 6a i've just subs i've just found out what 6g sine 30 is and i've replaced um the r the mu and the r by a quarter and what r is equal to okay so now i can find what the acceleration is Okay, so um, let's just work this out. This is going to be 3G. And here you're going to have the 2 cancelling with the 6. You're going to have 
3 times root 3 over 4 g is equal to 6 a. Did they say find the exact value of a? No, magnitude of acceleration. So we don't need to use set forms here. We can find out what a is. So we can say that basically a is going to be 1 sixth of all of this. So it's 3 times 9.8 minus 3 times root 3 over 4 times 9.8 and that will that will give me my a so we can take our calculator okay and you got 1 sixth let's put in exactly how it looks these calculators are quite useful here and then bracket and then 3 times 9.8 okay minus 3 root 3, 3 root 3, divided by 4, okay, times 9.8, close that bracket, and close the next bracket as well, for the whole thing. So, that will give us our answer, which is 2.778, 2.778, which we can, re we can round this to one um, to two decimal two significant figures as we used g as 9.8 g is equal to 9.8 that's how we use it in LXL and as it's 9.8 that is two significant figures our final answers can be rounded to two significant figures because that's the degree of accuracy we're using for g all right so <clears throat> I'm going to write it down in this form as well because I want to maybe use this in the next part of the question which I'll do in the next um, video Thank you for watching.